God. Okay, today I want to speak about this verse right here in Mishlei. And it's a very important verse. And it basically is talking about the the Gorel. Uh, the Gorel, the, the, the lot. The lot is cast into the heck, into the lap, the bosom, whatever. But the whole decision thereof is from Hashem. Now we're hearing all this stuff about Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, good luck. I know a girl. She was at Indian University with me, studying acting. Her idol was the acting career. And unfortunately, she got everything she wanted. She got a millionaire husband. She got a career. She got a modicum of fame and fortune. But on her tombstone, and by the way, she's buried not far from my mother, it says, goodbye, good luck, goodbye. Now, the second, one, the second goodbye means this is really it, goodbye. I'm gone. I'm out of here. But notice, the good luck is sandwiched between the two goodbyes. Now, I want to I ask you something out there, Mr. Hasid. Are you going to do what she did? Are you going to roll the dice and hope that your soul has mazel in the next world? Your nephish? Is this, is this what you're going to do? Are you, is, is your tombstone, you know, you know, is it going to be like a gaming table at Las Vegas? Is he in Gehinom? Is he in Gan Eden? Well, mazel tov. Good luck. Hope you make it. Hope you make it. Oh, he was such a wonderful rabbi. We know he must have made it for sure. For sure, he had the zikas of his fathers, the great rabbis that went before him. And also he had much merit himself. You know, he would go to the Tish and he would uh, get the shrine of the, the leftovers of the, of the ribby. And, and he, he, he was always getting uh, a blessing like that and always accru accruing merit like that. Listen. I want you to know, if you read the Orthodox Jewish Bible, uh, which was really done for these uh, Lubavitcher Chabadniks, he says at one point, not a righteousness of my own based on the Torah mitzvahs, but a righteousness that is from Moshiach ben Dovid, a righteousness that is from Hashem, a righteousness that comes from Imunah, the epistle of Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. This, this righteousness is what Avraham Avinu received. He believed God. He had Imunah. He trusted God. And God gifted him. He credited him. He gave him a, 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 a note of credit from the bank. You are a tzaddik. It was not based on his merit. He had no merit. He was a guy. He was a, a, an idol worshiper. I'm not going to use all the, 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 the Jewish terms. If you want those terms, get the Orthodox Jewish Bible www.afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B. Right here you see it, dot PDF. And you can see all these words. I'm, I'm not going to mystify people that don't know these words. I'm going to talk about Moshiach. What did he do? He had a kind of fabrengen. He had uh, 5,000 people. He had a little boy sack lunch. There were, all, uh, there were all these leftovers. Hallelujah. He fed 5,000 people with a little boy's sack, sackcloth. We're talking about a miracle here. 
We're talking about a real Rebbe. We're talking about the, the truth, the, the El Emes, the God of truth. Hallelujah. So we don't believe in good luck. No, we don't believe in it because everything is from Hashem. The, 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 even even your, your merit is an alien merit. It's not yours. It's imputed to you. You didn't come up with it. It comes from God. And uh, there was uh, a, a Gentile woman. And uh, she came to the Moshiach, and she said, my child ha is demon-possessed. And uh, could you come and help her? And Moshiach said nothing. You know, in Isaiah 53, it says, uh, e even though he, was, was, did he did not open his mouth, um, you know, he said nothing. And then the, the Tommy Deem, they came and they said, look, she's pestering us, she's crying, she's calling out, you know, to send her away. So the Mashiach, who loves everybody, tested her. He said, look, the food is uh, for the children and it's not to be given to dogs. But she said, yes, but the dogs do get the crumbs. In other words, the shirayim. And uh, he looked at her and he said, in all of Israel, I have not seen emunah like this woman. He said, go, your, your request has been taken care of. In other words, he did a, an exorcism by remote uh, you might say a distance exorcism, and the demon left. Listen, only Moshiach ben Dovid has power over the devil. You will never get delivered from demons unless you come to him. Hallelujah. He has the credentials. If you will go to the Orthodox Jewish Bible and look at Matthew chapter one, you will see the 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 genealogy, the the yikus of um, of Yosef ben David. If you go to Lucas chapter three, you will see the genealogy of Miriam bat David, Haalma Batula. He came into this world. According to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, you say, oh, you're misinterpreting it. No, I'm not. Look at the, the, look at the preface. Go to afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B dot PDF and read the preface and you will see this is the proper exegesis. Oh, hallelujah. I want to thank God today that there is a Moshiach a real Moshiach. He's not moldering in the grave at Old Montefiore Cemetery. He's alive. He dematerialized on the road to Emmaus at the breaking of the Matzot, the Sudas Moshiach. He was gone. Then he materialized in the upper room, the Aliyah uh, room there, uh with the doors locked he materialized hallelujah because you see the takrihim could not hold him even though they were wrapped around him like a mummy he simply de dematerialized and then materialized and put the head sh shroud neatly there and when Yohanan looked into the empty tomb and he saw this he knew immediately he had Imunah. He saw that Moshiach ben Dovid had brought immortality to light. He, 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 even before the resurrection appearances, he already knew. He could see this. 
look at those last couple of chapters in the the Basara Hatova, ha, 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 the Basara Hageulah of Yohanan, and you will see this. Hallelujah, my friend. We have an inerrant Bible. Everything was very carefully done, recorded, eyewitnessed, certified, written down, and codified so that we could see that nothing happened by luck. Nothing happened by chance. Everything was preordained. Everything was destined by God, not by some kind of blind chance some kind of stupid mazel. Can you imagine how sad that is? A person I knew at Indiana University, when she was 19 years old, who dies and is buried in, in Woodlawn Cemetery in Los Angeles in Santa Monica, and it says, goodbye, good luck, goodbye. How sad that is. Not goodbye, may God bless you, or goodbye, Baruch Hashem, or goodbye, uh, uh, Moshiach ben Dovid, may you find him. Uh, no, no witness to the light, just darkness. Mazel darkness. You go to the gaming tables. You go to the one-armed bandit. You you play the lottery. You 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 hope that chance will bless you. Your God is luck. Your religion is a religion of luck. The Bible is closed to you. You don't know God. You don't you you don't have a clue. You're serving a rotting false Moshiach. You are lost. You're in darkness. Your, your grave will be a sad place. You can go to the, to the gravestone of all these ribbies uh, in uh, the Ukraine, and you can pray there till the cows come home, and you're still lost. It isn't God's will. He doesn't enjoy the fact that you're perishing. He doesn't want you to perish. He spent hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of years, a couple of thousand years, showing you just exactly how completely in control he is. Where the prophet said this would happen, the Mashiach would do this, he would do that, then it actually happened. All of this was, was recorded. All of this was eyewitnessed. Why? For you. But because of the darkness of your heart, because of the idol in your heart, you know, uh, the prophet uh, Yehezkel, Ezekiel, he said, they, my people have idols in their heart. There's an idol in your heart that keeps you from seeing the truth. Lord, I want to pray right now for every Habadnik in, in Crown Heights every emissary going from Crown Heights to the ends of the earth, every Lubavitcher, every one of the Mishihistim, I want to pray, dear God, that they will stop playing Russian roulette with their soul, that they will stop gambling with their nefesh, that their funeral will not be goodbye, good luck, goodbye, like this 19-year-old girl who was a Gentile, Maybe as a Gentile woman, she could be somewhat excused for at least being ignorant. But my people perish for lack of knowledge of the Word of God, and there's no excuse. You spend all day long with your nose in a tome, but it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Kit Beha Kodesh. You're on welfare so that all you have to do is go to the yeshiva and spend time turning the pages and reading in Aramaic without, a, without any lexical aid. 
and you're doing all of this, but you don't have one scintilla of time to look at the Kitve HaKodesh. And what you're doing is you're taking the gaming table and the dice, and you're hoping against hope that your dead moldering in the grave Messiah is the real Messiah and that the one I'm talking about, which you know very well who I'm talking about, is not the real Messiah. And this is your futile and hopeless gamble, a true hopelessness, unbelievable hopelessness. Rob Scholl said, I could be cut off forever if my people could be saved. I have unceasing sorrow for them. I could weep. I could weep right now for them. I would do anything to save them. But they have a zeal for Mashiach without knowledge. I drive there, I drive by there with the, the Bible that took me 30 years to translate. I want to put a copy of it. They're all out in front of their their Lavavacher headquarters shul. There's all this uh, all this activity. If I got out of my car and put the Bible right there on the steps, there would be a riot. So I have to try to do the best I can. At 77 years of age, at 770 Eastern Parkway, Brooklyn, New York. I pray right now, Lord, for every single lost Jew in the world and every single lost Gentile. And oh God, I give you the praise that many will come to the Lord. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. Moshiach ben David, say this with me. Moshiach ben David, I believe in Hashem. But if you are the true Moshiach ben David, the Bar Enosh, come into my heart. I repent, I make teshuvah, I turn from, wor from worldly mazel, and I look to you, Lord, and your sovereign control, and your love, and your kapora, and your teshuvah for me. It's a gift. You gave it to me. You want to give it to me. It's a gift. Emunah is a gift. Teshuvah is a gift. I have no merit of my own. I can never have it. My zikas I do not have. I look for the zikas of Moshiach Zidkenu. I ask him to come into my heart and take control of my life. Hallelujah. And I will serve him and follow him, and I'll never be ashamed of him all the days of my life. And he will help me and lead me. And yes, my people will come to him. In the latter days, yes, a great movement of the people of God. And Lord, I pray right now that all of these emissaries going to the ends of the earth, that, that you, Lord, will turn them all back to Yeshua ben David. And we'll give you the praise. Amen.